Most of the team rushed in from the city to be here. You're the only one who has returned. What? Do you have any sense of how long you've been gone? 14 months and 10 days. <laughs> Listen, I know you're exhausted, but we were hoping you could tell us a little bit about where you've been. What you saw, you know, how you made it back. We'll start small. What's the last thing you remember before waking up in that anger? I was at a bar. The bar? Yeah. By yourself? No, no I, was, I, was with, I was with someone. Who? Ryan. Ryan Hoover. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is a spoiler-full podcast about a new episode or show on Apple TV Plus called Dark Matter. We're kind of stepping away from some of the comic stuff, but this actually, this actually, this show is based upon a novel, a sci-fi novel, which is interesting. So uh, it kind of fits in our format, but we're going to do this anyway, and we're going to have fun with it. And I'm hoping you guys do follow along. We're doing this episode by episode. So keep in mind, spoiler full, those of you who already know about Dark Matter, it dropped the first two episodes, but we're right now concentrating on this particular podcast on episode one. So as I stated, we're covering Dark Matter season one, episode one. Are you happy in your life? And the information about the show, well, it was first announced in December 2020 that Apple TV Plus had entered into a development series adaptation of Blake Crouch's novel with Crouch set to to write, act as showrunner. The series was uh, officially greenlit in March 2022 with Apple ordering nine episodes and Joel Edgerton cast to star. Louis Lecciaria, who was set to direct the first four episodes, and by September 2022, Jennifer Connelly, Alice Braga, Jimmy Simpson, Oaks Fegley, and Deo uh, Okaniwi. I, I don't want to say anything wrong. <laughs> Okaniwi. I, I, I'm terrible at names, everybody, so if I destroyed your name, I'm sorry. Uh, they all joined the cast. And in December, Amanda Bruegel would join the cast in a recurring role. So production began in Chicago on October 4th, 2022, and was expected to wrap by April 2023. And then Apple TV announced the series will premiere on May 8th, 2024, which it did. So uh, a lot of people were very much interested. Uh, Apple TV Plus is doing a huge promotion of this. You do see it when you turn on your Apple TV. It comes up on your home screen. And it's one of the first big things. So I'm glad that we're doing this. And I'm glad because of the the, the actors that we have, the uh, the source material seems interesting to me. And I and so does Steve. Uh, Steve, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on the idea of the concept of the the show? Yeah, I, I love it. And and I this is my one my one regret. I was gonna have this later notes. We can talk about it right now. My one regret is I when you when you pitch the show, when you pitched, hey, let's uh, do dark matter. Um, I was like, what? I hadn't even heard of it. So <laughs> I went and watched the trailer and now and I kind of regret and this is the first time I this is this is big for me, folks. Because I usually don't care about spoilers. I don't care about trailers. I love mm-hmm. to watch them. I love to know what's going on. But with this particular one, I watched the trailer, and as soon as I watched the trailer, I knew everything that was going to happen, or probability of what's going to happen in the show. Yeah, you know, so because the trailer gives away that it's an alternate uh, reality or alternate universe kind of show, science fiction. Mm-hmm. But I like the twist they put on it so far. In that, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I really liked it. I, I, the concept is good. I like the concept. Mm-hmm. We've seen the concept a lot. So I kind of hope they find a way to subvert our expectations a little bit. I, I don't know the novel. I may, after the season, after we finish the season, I may try to go back and find the novel and read it to see how close it was, you know, but I do appreciate the fact that the guy that wrote the novel is involved with the show. Cause that yeah. helps, helps give the authenticity 
to it. I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I feel the same way too, in the sense that you know, it's like we we see Stephen King, but then again, half the time Stephen King's work never is what it is in book form to film. But uh, in this case, this guy is directly involved, and mm-hmm. it, it's amazing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait to, to see how the rest of the, the series plays out. Um, yeah. I'm excited for it. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a trope that's been, been done. I mean, just most recently, <laughs> the show that I saw, um, uh, the spinoff from supernatural called the Winchesters was a uh, spoiler. If you haven't seen a show from three years ago, um, <laughs> that, uh, uh, is an alternate universe of the supernatural universe. So it's kind of cool to have another uh, another show doing this alternate universe kind of thing. So I, like I said, I'm excited to see where they take it and hopefully they have kind of a twist to it. Hopefully it's not too um, predictable, yeah. you know, like, like I will say, I mean, as soon as the guy in the white mask showed up, I was like, <laughs> you knew right oh, away. That's him. oh, that's, that's an, al- that's the alternate version of him. And then but, of course he knew the father's birthday in reverse, you know, takes the phone. I, I know your father, I know your code is your father's birthday in reverse. And you know, and then he, the, the show, this is my only, I will give this one criticism of the show. They kind of hit us over the head with it, right? <laughs> because like when, when Jason, when main Jason asks him, who are you? He says, yeah. you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, he's when the wife, when uh, Jennifer Connelly's character sees the mark on his arm or whatever that is on his arm, mm-hmm. she, he says, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. So I'm like, okay, okay, we get it. It's an alternate version of him. We get it. You know, um, <laughs> we figured this out. Uh, now, where are you going to go from here? And it, on the second watch, I really realized that at the beginning, the guy we see at the beginning with a little vial is the alt, is the alt version. Not yeah, the I, main, I, not, I thought yeah. about that right away. I was like, well, that's an alternate version. Uh, these are tropes and things that we all get because yes everybody we are already covering stuff we're waiting another one that's gonna have alternate stuff that's coming out in july that we are anticipating comic book related deadpool mm-hmm. wolverine it's gonna have multiple version multiverse versions of these people now right now in this particular show in the first episode we're just concentrating on just what two people Wait until mm-hmm. it starts, because if you look at that maze and that AI uh, introduced, uh, like introduction of the the show, like the the whole intro with the music and very mm-hmm. much like Westworld, but it's a maze and labyrinth. Yeah, and not to put a pun into it, because you know Jennifer Connelly was in Labyrinth, but it had that <laughs> same kind of feature and feel. So we know that these people are going to get involved right now. We're just dealing with two realities. Wait until we get into five or six realities. Mm -hmm. And if the Jason that we know has to go from not just the one he got thrown into by his other self, but gets thrown into another one else Mm -hmm. that, you know, and yeah, you're how many have, versions of him are we going to see? Yeah. How many versions of his life are we going to see? Even um, Daniela, Amanda, uh, Jimmy Simpson's character, Ryan, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And there, there are multiple amounts of these, these actors and characters that we're going to possibly see yeah. that are going to be like, wait a minute, which world are we in? Now you mm-hmm. have to factor in. It's like, do I have to flag this and do <laughs> a yeah. poster of like yeah. this reality goes to this reality to this yeah. to this you know i've got to get a venn diagram of of how these people all interact and it's and, an ncis yeah. like wall <laughs> pattern that you have to do everybody with string and it's all yeah. string theory at that point too because they do mention neuroscience we do get the uh awesome uh the schrodinger's cat Yep, uh, that's what I was um, gonna get to. Yep. Yeah, I hadn't. I, I don't think. I think it's been a long time since I've heard that whole explanation. Like they've talked about it in other shows, but I think that's the first time in a while that I've heard the entire, you know, radioactive isotope thing. And you always just hear the cat is in there with a vial of poison or something Correct. like that, and and the cat is both alive and dead mm-hmm. until you open the box. And, and but once you open the box, you ruin the experiment. So yeah, but I, I thought it was it was pretty funny when the kid goes, he got he liked to torture cats. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I I like I like it, and I, I'm 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 excited to see where it's going to go and, and yeah. uh, continue on. Um, 
let's talk about Daniela for a minute. Let's say, uh, and we'll, we'll, we can, we can break this down. Um, sure. I'm a little, she had me a little bit confused because so when she's with Maine Jason, they seemed very affectionate and very loving. And it just seemed, it seemed like a good, they were in a good place in their relationship. Right. Correct. And then when he, when, when all Jason comes back late and he hasn't returned her calls, he hasn't returned her texts. She's, she's mad. And it almost acts like this is like a regular thing or something like I, I couldn't, I didn't, the turns she made in that scene were, I mean, on one hand, you could say they were brilliant because she's obviously loves this man, mm -hmm. but it seemed like the, when the first kiss happened, she kind of recoils back and almost, I almost wondered on the second watch, I almost wondered, does she, does she like notice that something's different? Like, is, is this going to be, I, I'll be very interested to, to hear and, and see the rest of with her because there, there is a moment where it seemed like she was like, you know, when she goes like, what is this? You know, because maybe he's never been that forward with his affections or something. Hmm. I, I don't know. But it seemed like at first she's thinking there's something different here. I but thought it had to do with something with the bar relation. And he might have had an issue with alcohol at one point. And he got back late and ignored the texts and mm -hmm. possibly. And then this was her way of trying to rope him. And even though she had encouraged him to go meet Ryan at the bar, even she was shocked that, oh, you're going to that bar. So I'm I'm thinking this is something that's historical within their relationship. Well, and yeah. with Ryan. And then, and then, of course, there's that moment when he asks her, do you remember what I told you when we started this? And I want to go, wait a minute, how does he know their, their past? Like, where did these, where I have did a theory? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but let me, let me finish my ahead, thought. Because ahead, I, yeah. Yeah. Wh where did, where did they depart? I guess, because, you know, because she says, oh, you wanted to wait. You didn't want to wake up. You wanted to wake up. You wanted to have memories of me, not memories of a sterile lab. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, how does he know that? So go ahead. What's your theory? My theory is, is as we know, the Jason uh, Destin that, that came from that world went to the other one. They stated, oh, Jason, you've been gone for 14 months. I think he had been gone 14 months and he was undercover in that world, stalking his own self and then picking up on the patterns of that Jason's life. And figuring out his patterns, his interests, his thoughts, especially when she brings up, oh, mint chocolate chip, ice cream. You know, it was down to something that either was something in the past that mm -hmm. he had looked at that he had followed up on. But it was a bad idea because she kind of flagged it at that point. So I think he had been following him to make the switch and change. So he could have, and I don't think it's going to be. So the two you timelines, think you think that they would claim each other's lives, but there's mm -hmm. something ulterior going on. So you think the timelines are, are running concurrently. I like, think I was so. Almost, I was almost confused. I was like, wait, 14 months, how long? And, and I, I like your theory. I think, I think your theory could, it could be correct that that 14 months that he was gone, mm -hmm. he was like stalking them and, and, you know, studying them so that when he made the switch, he would know enough to be convincing as, uh, Jason. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting, yeah, I, I'm going to be interested to see like what, again, I, I'm, I'm interested if they're going to show us a flashback of where, the world's diverged or how the world's diverged or, or if they're, you know, they may not even bother to show us that, but I think they're <laughs> going to have to show us something. They and have I hope, to. I hope they don't go with the trope of like, right. Like in one of these, in one of these uh, worlds, Ryan is married to Daniela, you know, and then there's, <laughs> a, and I want to go, oh, please don't do that. That's, that's the one thing that I will say, please don't do. I hope they don't do that because yeah. that's so obvious of a, of a thing to do. That's a that, cliche. Uh, yeah, 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 a cliche. Um, so I hope they do. I hope they don't do that. Um, but yeah, I was uh, I was interested. I'm getting it's gonna be again. I'm I'm really intrigued after just one episode to see where this goes and how it how it uh, 
uh, diverges. And I have a question mm -hmm. that's just a gee whiz kind of question. Sure. How did he pay the cab driver? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, he had, his, he, he had his phone, so maybe he was able to, to do something with the phone to pay yeah. for the cab ride. But that was, that was both times I watched it, I was like, how do you pay the cab driver? Like, and how far did that cab driver have to go? Because the one guy says they drove in from the city to be in this lab, right? Mm -hmm. um, and where is this facility at? How far did he, because it looked like at first, it looked like it was really far away from the city. That and is true. Very, the next scene, he's walking on a bridge in the city. And I'm like, wait, did he just... <laughs> <laughs> to travel from one place to, to the other. It's it's these are the just the these are just the nitpicky kind of questions that that I think us podcasters would ask and everybody else is gonna kind of just gloss over them. But there's certain things that I want to go, how did you do that? How did you know how do you get from there to there? You know <laughs> I, I like the idea that you say how did you pay the cab driver? And the first thing yeah. out of my thought was like Apple Pay. <laughs> yeah, Apple Pay, PayPal, so, something with the phone. Like I said, he did have the phone, so maybe he had some way of paying the cab driver from the phone, but uh, I did. I also, the, I didn't realize until the second time I watched it, I think that the, I mean, I was already expecting it wouldn't, it was not going to be her. It was not going to be Daniela yeah. that he found in his home. I already I knew that, that too. Yeah. but the, the, the closed captioning gives it away when she says his name, because it says Amanda in the closed captioning saying Jason, like mm -hmm. instead of just saying a woman, saying Jason, and then we get the reveal of Amanda being there. They kind of spoil it for us, you know, a few seconds before. Well, that's closed captioning spoilers right yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, and that, and that happens. It's not a big deal, but it's just one of those little things that I was just like, but I guess we should have understood, we should have expected it the way she hugged him mm. in the, when, when he woke up. Uh, I, I kind of caught that right away. And I, I said, all right, they're connected. And mm -hmm. the excitement that they were. The first thing I thought, because they were talking about radiation, fallout, and all this, I'm thinking outside is an apocalypse. And then when he gets out there, it's not. So yeah, like I'm were, curious were... as to where he went. It had to be because he deals with physics. It has to be something to do with a uh, contained laboratory area or or something that is contained where they were defying physics yeah. to a different world and they probably ventured out. So they must've crossed into something mm -hmm. and he might've sent other people out there, but he is the first one to ever come back. Apparently. Yeah. That's what I was interested. It was interesting that they, you know, they, 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 <laughs> they sit, they cut off his clothes and I want to go, I wanted him to go, Hey, I just got these, you know, or something. <laughs> um, but they, 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 they cut off his clothes and the guy says, test everything. They're all in those like hazmat suits Correct. and they, they wash him. So I was, I was kind of with you. I was kind of like, what, where has he been that they know or they expect we've got to sterilize him mm -hmm. before we can, we can talk to him and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, that was interesting. I, I'm interested to see what that is. What is what kind of experiments was he doing? Um, obviously, the show is called Dark Matter, so he may have been experimenting with dark matter. I don't know. I I started to do a, a deep dive Wikipedia on what dark matter is, and I stopped myself because I was it's just the like purple ah. stuff that he had in the, uh, the probably the, the syringe <laughs> that was supposed to go in that we see in the very beginning because yeah. it looks like a uh, a more like. I, I hate saying it because but if you look at Star Trek and everything else, they have these syringes mm -hmm. that don't even have needles on them. It right. looked to me like something like that where it gets forced in. Maybe okay. it's something forced in for them to move in from one extreme to the next, but who knows? Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, I, my, I, you were talking about Daniela and Daniela herself. If you think about her as a character, it's mm -hmm. interesting about her uh, of like, like my first impressions of her. And I, I kind of pulled my notes together to get an idea uh, seems to be like a, a go getting housewife. She is more focused in on her work. And even her friend says she's trying to avoid her real life, which is her family. Yeah. Again, that's that dichotomy of, of, yeah. of we, we saw this, this scene, this very, I, I, 
idyllic. I don't. I'm, my, my, what is my vocabulary today? We see this very <laughs> pleasant scene with the uh, affectionate scene with where she's you know joshing with the son a little bit about his driving. Correct. They have this affection for each other in the morning, and it, it looks like this is a normal, you know, uh, house. Yeah, a normal. What's the word? I'm family. Functioning, you know, functioning family. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, a, a functional, a functional family. But then, like you said, that the friend makes that comment about, oh, you're avoiding. You're training for this triathlon. Correct. Yeah, that's what um, I was thinking. To, yeah. to avoid your family. And I want to go, but is she like a, a museum curator? Because, you know, she was talking about the painting and the brush strokes. Yeah, she's she, putting on lauded art exhibits, art, apparently. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it, it, I'm inter- again, it's, I, we're, we're just setting up these characters right now. So, yeah, you know, maybe there was some little bit where they wanted to kind of show us the, the, the pleasant side of it. And then there's going to be a darker side at some point. As know, whereas that- with Jason, we do see him and how his affections for his son. And she was like, Oh, you're not driving. You're not driving. And then he makes right. him drive. And yeah. then there's that call from Ryan. And then, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, yeah. Making the remark. But the thing was, is that the fact that he entrusts his son into things, he's trying to be the father to his son and family man. But there's something hidden from us because this is our first impressions. Mm -hmm. So there's probably something that happened with him that made Jason become this person. So and Mm -hmm. the alternate version of Jason, we don't know from what we know. He's not married, doesn't have a girlfriend really per se, because even though Amanda has affections for him, she says you live alone. No, she said you're not married. She said you don't have a wife. Okay, good. Is what she said. Yeah, I, that's I, I, like exactly I said, I just, I just watched it. So, I, see, I got the impression that they were living together. That's why she was in the house. That's what I thought, and that's, too. And that's why. It, so, maybe you're right. Maybe they, they're not uh, living. I, I got the impression they were living together because, like, he goes upstairs and he goes into his office and he sees the fact that he won yeah. that Pavia award and not Ryan. So, that's where I'm, I'm confused with the timeline a little bit. Because, mm-hmm. because the beginning of the show of the of the episode, Ryan tells him, "I just won the Pavia, and I'm going to open this, you know, this uh, whatever neurotech company in San Francisco." And then he, he talks about and, the other guy who he meets in the other world, Layton. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Layton, he was like, "Oh," and it and they, he makes the comment uh, uh, about what a joke Layton was when they were in college. Oh, I, I, miss, as well I forgot about that. You're bar. right. 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 Okay. Um, but yet but, Ryan in, in that world is not really present and he's not involved with that whole scenario of what's going yeah, on. And so I, I'm, I'm wondering when did, when did all Jason win this Pavia award and start this? Was it, did he win it, you know, earlier than Ryan in the main universe? I don't know how we're going to. We'll this find out. Honest, <laughs> honestly, I'm sure most of you listeners have been watching ahead or you've read the book. So you have a, a chance to give us a little bit of insight without even spoiling us. So right now we're just covering the first episode. By the yeah. next episode, you'll have other things that you could state that happened maybe at that point. I don't know. I haven't watched ahead. I yeah, literally I only watched, watched it yet either, so. twice and that was it. So yeah, you guys let us know, give us that. We'll let you know where to comment as well and get to us with feedback. But right now it's like with the characters and the character development, it's interesting for some of the characters that we know, the actors involved, like, uh, you know, we got Joel Edgerton as uh, Jason, who we know. And my first impression of Joel Edgerton was literally from Star Wars as playing Uncle Owen, early Uncle Owen. Back okay. in uh, what Clone Wars at that point, and then you know Revenge of the Sith, and then after that he was in the Thing 2011 with uh, uh, who? Yeah, was see, it? I never saw that one. That was the prequel. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that was that was the prequel, which actually coincides. I covered that on uh, Journal and Cinema podcast. I may with have Jerry. watched that once. I may have watched that once. I don't remember now. It, it's good to uh, watch that first and go right into Carpenter's thing, and it does yeah. work. Mesh. The only issues that we had, honestly, listeners, it was just like effects for the <laughs> 2011, yeah. not 
the original 80s version that Carpenter did. Mm -hmm. We love the Carpenter one. Uh, right. The 2011 one was, I thought it was a solid story, but whatever. But yeah. that's how we know Joel Edgerton. And then, of okay. course, we mentioned uh, Jennifer Connelly, who we knew from Labyrinth. I mentioned that. Beautiful, intelligent, wonderful woman. Uh, has a whole huge, like, world of movies that we could just dive into being drama comedy anything mm -hmm. and you just love her in all those uh, oh yeah she's uh, great she's 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 wonderful and in just paul whatever she, she wife. does yeah uh, yeah you know, the vision and she is the voice actually in homecoming if you all remember mm -hmm. that too so uh she does make uh it's an mcu family yeah and then of yeah. course we got jimmy simpson as ryan who i first remembered seeing in the movie loser with uh, jason biggs wow which was a really bad movie it was a bad comedy in early 2000 but he see i think the first thing i saw him in was uh was psych where he had a recurring role in oh, psych okay. and, and then and then he was on a season of um oh it was another book series with uh, pollyanna mcintosh and him oh. uh, he played he played a character named soldier i think is what they called him um a, a real it's interesting because he played very very against type yeah uh, in in this show and the name of the show is escaping me it had um oh that's horrible it was a great show too anyway um <laughs> he was in that he was in one season of that and he, like i said he had a recording role on psych and then of course westworld yeah um, westworld was the biggest one that i remember him from i remember him from other like movies and appearances and things of yeah. that nature but same thing with the 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 actress who played uh, amanda as well as uh the other actor who played layton mm -hmm. so i like we have familiar faces within us that we do will basically follow along because we've seen them other places and we figure okay we're gonna get a great show out of this and i yeah. i think they started it off very well yeah, and absolutely I, I, yeah yeah it, you said it, you wanted to talk about the music the music was pretty cool uh it was written by jason hill okay. and jason hill has been around for a long long time uh he's done fire in 2019 mine hunter uh the confession okay. killer like he's done episodic tv shows for yeah. the most part it, it had a very noir feeling about it and so i hope that, and then you know of course there's kind of a jazzy feeling and then that song at the very end uh yes was was pretty uh intense it gave <laughs> me uh carpenter fives too at the piano at, at one point too so just to give uh the tension here yeah. and there and i like when uh composers actually do that you don't have to have a fully orchestrated it just one instrument you know, sharp mm -hmm. notes, and then it just works. It gets you in the feel of uh, what's going on with the character. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, the those were my thoughts. I didn't have any other notes except that you know the you know we already mentioned it earlier that the creator, the writer, is highly involved within the show itself. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that's happening, and it's very it's not so often that we do get something like that out of this. So uh, I'm loving the fact that, you know, we got Blake Crouch involved heavily within the show itself. Uh, and in comparison to what, like game of Thrones <laughs> where he was barely there and he couldn't even get his books out. So, <laughs> yeah, no. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to see where it goes from here and uh and see what i'm looking up that jimmy simpson show because it's gonna it's gonna bug me if i don't remember <laughs> what, this, what this show was um uh, uh give me a second here this is great this is great listening time i'm sure everybody <laughs> all enjoying this um he was in green oh just a, that's a cartoon um this is horrible there's psych uh, He was an Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter. Yep. 
<laughs> he's been it. He's got. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to scroll through this because he's had a lot of credits. Um, yeah, he does. Um, and I'm trying to find the one that I'm looking for, and it's not coming up for me. That's horrible. Uh, that is weird. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's here. It's just I've got to. I've got to find it. Um, but yeah, it's anyway. He, we love Jimmy Simpson. We've, we've loved him for a long time, I'm sure. And, and we, we, Jennifer Connelly is amazing at everything she does. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that we, we just really enjoy these, these actors. And I can't wait to see more of what they're going to show us, uh, in this, in this, uh, season. So, yeah, the episodes are, don't run very long. They're between 45 minutes to like 53 minutes long. So yeah. keep that in mind. So it's not a long watch. It's not like an extended movie. So yeah, I think you, this first one was like 47 minutes. I started it at like two and yeah. was, was finished with it before we started recording today. So yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a good watch. And if you do it once a week uh, to me, that's how I've been trying to approach it. When I was covering Monarch with Bill, uh, Bill, Ben Beck. <laughs> sorry, everybody, and sorry, Ben. Uh, when I was covering uh, Monarch with Ben Beck on uh, Wilhelm and Podcastica, uh, I kind of jumped the shark when everything got dropped on me, when I could get, you know, I got screeners. But with this, we got dropped both episodes, and then mm-hmm. I could have always waited a week or whatever. And you know what? No. Not going to do it this time. And same thing when I do interview with the vampire with the vampire on uh, when it comes out on AMC plus, I'm not looking ahead for certain episodes, by the way, we are covering that. So on adrenaline cinema and podcast, and it'll be on house podcast, just to give a cheap plug right there. Nice. But uh, we will be covering this episodically every episode per week. So if you're keeping up with us, Thank you. If not just, and just listening and listening along with what our thoughts were great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, let a friend know that we are doing this. Uh, a lot of and people say, like to do it. Did you say is TV podcast industry? So they covering this one also, or are they not covering this one? I'm not too sure if Derek okay. and John are actually covering this yet. So okay. uh, we'll find out. Yeah. I haven't kept up with, I, I, have to admit i haven't kept up with their podcast it's been it's been a crazy year for me i haven't <laughs> been listening to them uh, as much as i should as well same thing with like uh, i've been trying to catch up with a lot of other podcasts as well like mm-hmm. with run for your lives and stuff like that that's on podcast uh i've also been involved just like steve has because he's been on buffy uh the buffy verse which was uh still slaying which is on mm-hmm. podcast guys. So I was on there as well. Yeah, I so, can't wait to go back. I'm, I've got at least one more episode. I think I'm going to go back with them uh, later. So yeah, at least one. So, but uh, for now we're, we're covering this. You could hear us here. We're going to put this out once a week. So you guys have us to listen to and then anything else. And then what we also suggest uh, right now, uh, I have no notes, no other thoughts, but I do have one quote. And this is Jason to his captor. What is that? And captor, uh, and this is when the captor, which is Jason himself, (laughs) gives him the syringe. He goes, it's a possibility. So what that possibility is, I want to know. And I'm sure everybody wants to know as they watch the show go on. So I'm, I'm excited to see, like I said, where this is going to go and how they're, how they're going to take it. So it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back podcasting. Also, I've, I've been on a little bit of a break, uh, because of my health and stuff, but, uh, I don't need to get into that with the, all the listeners, but, um, and yeah, as that's always, all I've got. yeah, uh, yeah. And always there's next week too. listeners will be covering episode dark two. matter. Season one, episode two, uh, trip of best a lifetime. Tri- best trip of your life, the trip of your lifetime, something like it's that. It's trip of a lifetime. Okay. And uh, uh, like I said, it already came uh, had come out, so probably going to watch dropped. it as soon as we're done. As so as we're done exactly, here, I'll probably watch it. <laughs> so uh, with that, you could uh, you know send in your feedback and where to send your feedback. Well. Uh, if you'd like to send any feedback, all you have to do is uh, send us an email or record your voice and just send it as an attachment to panels 2 pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels2 is spelled out T-O, pixels in the number one at gmail.com. Or you could just go to our Facebook page where I did actually leave 
<laughs> uh, a, an image and saying, please leave your comments below. So nobody has, but uh, it would always be there. I'll do it once a week. I'll take an image from the episode and just put it up there. And you just guys could just leave your thoughts in the image below. Or you could just message us through uh, Facebook Messenger, as always. That's always a availability. If you are subscribed and follow us on Facebook, that would be great. Uh, we can also be found on Instagram as well. That is linked because, you know, that's how meta works. Because once <laughs> I post it on one, it posts it on the other. Nice. So we can be found on Instagram at panel Panels to Pixels Podcast. So that's at Panels to Pixels Podcast. We could also be found on YouTube. And all you have to do is look for Panels to Pixels Podcast on YouTube. Hit subscribe, ring the bell, be notified, and like the episodes. And it helps us get noticed. You could also leave messages. And we have, and we've read them here too, by the way. So uh, you can also leave us a rating or review. That would be awesome in YouTube as well as Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Those are the best places to go, apparently, and get your ratings or reviews. And just please uh, write out a review if you can. Uh, it actually helps people pinpoint, because if they just see, and it's like, oh, five stars, what did you like about it? <laughs> it's like, or what didn't you like about it? Because some, you know, there are those people out there that don't like what people do. So, um that's it. So, uh, well, that just basically wraps up everything for this week about dark matter. And I'm so glad that we got into something new. This is going to be interesting. We're, we're going to have a I'm lot excited. of fun. Yeah. Uh, we're, yeah. This will hold us till Boys. in July when something else comes out, not just Deadpool Wolverine. I'm also talking about the boys. That's June. I think June 24th, I believe. Wasn't it really? June 24th? I thought I it was in wrong. July. All right. Maybe well, it is. Maybe it is. I can't remember. I, I haven't <laughs> looked it up recently. <laughs> I'm sure. You, you know, if not, you could always send in some information, everybody, and just correct me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I was under the uh, assumption that July 13th was. Okay. Uh, that, yeah, that could be right. I, I'm. For the I, admit, I have not looked recently. So. But uh, we'll try to fulfill all the content that we can right here on Panels to Pixels podcast. You could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, as always, uh, coming up. Um, we're looking to do uh, Demolition Man, and we are in the process. By the time you get this interview with the vampire, will be out on AMC+. Plus. Check that out. If you like to follow us there, you could hear me, Lara, Danny, and Rima from Strange Indeed. Uh, Rima will be there a few times. She uh, she can't make it there for the whole time, but she'll jump in whenever she can. So Excellent. you can check us out there when we do that. And that's episodically as well. We're going to do it episode by episode. And it's the first time we're doing that. And it's a cross-platform collaboration between Adrenaline Cinema Podcast and Podcastica. So if anything, you just go to podcastica.com or you just go to Adrenaline Cinema Podcast at, you know, on Facebook. And just follow us there or go to piratecarentertainment.com. So with that, that is our episode. And I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.